Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. In this Ultimate Boa Face-Off, I'm going to compare two of the most popular dwarf locality boas, the Tarahumara Mountain Boa and the Kral Key Boa. I'm going to compare these two boas in five different categories, awarding an individual winner in each category. At the end of the episode, the animal with the most individual wins will be declared the overall winner. So be sure to stay tuned to see which one of these animals is declared the ultimate in dwarf locality boas. For today's face-off, we'll be comparing these animals in five categories, which includes temperament, uh, husbandry, looks and beauty, breeding potential, and then finally the popularity and future potential of the locality. And so first of all, I'd like to say that I have really enjoy both of these dwarf locality boas and really value the ones I have in my collection. Um, a lot of people, of course, think boas are giant snakes, but these animals are no bigger than a corn snake or a ball python. So they're a great uh, animal if you're looking for the full-size boa constrictor experience in a much more manageable pint-sized package. So we have the Tarahumara Mountain Boa from Northern Mexico which this is arguably the smallest of the locality boas with adults in roughly the three and a half to four and a half foot range. And then we have the Kral Key boa from a small island off the coast of Belize, which is just slightly larger at around four to five feet maximum length. Both of these animals were formally classified as localities of the subspecies of boa constrictor, boa constrictor imperator, but with the recent reclassification of boa constrictor, these are now considered two separate species. The Tarahumara is considered a locality of boa sigma, whereas the Qualki boa is considered a locality of boa imperator. So it'll be interesting to see how a boa taxonomy evolves over the years ahead and if the different localities are further divided into different taxonomic groups. So with that introduction, let's get to the comparison. The first category is temperament. So pet owners are looking for a docile, laid back temperament in their boas. Typically they don't want to get bitten. So with that in mind, we'll start with the Tarahumara mountain boa. So baby Tarahumara mountain boas often start a little hissy and nippy and typically they'll be a little defensive and kind of strike out uh, to defend themselves, but it's completely a bluff as they rarely if ever bite. And even if they do bite, they're so, their mouths are so small, they can really do absolutely no damage. It's almost comical to watch. Uh, typically the animals will calm down by around a year or so of age, you know, earlier than that if you handle them regularly. And then they become very mellow animals. The Terahumara mountain boas tend to be a little less active than some of the other locality boas and you can take them out and hold them and they don't really move around a whole, whole lot. They're almost similar to ball pythons in you know, their, their movement and you know, in terms of that temperament. They're not the most active of boas and they don't really squeeze a whole lot. So a great boa to just take out and handle and admire. As far as temperament, crawl key boa babies tend to be less hissy and less uh, nippy than the Tarahumara mountain boas. Um, as adults, they're typically pretty laid back, pretty chill. No, I've never, I don't think I've ever actually been bitten by one of these animals. Um, as far as their behavior, they're more active than the Tarahumara mountain boas. They move around more, they climb more. Um, the bodies overall feel a little more muscular. You know, they're definitely a little more squeezy than the Tarahumara mountain boas. But they're, you know, being so small, they're very manageable, very easy to handle. I think some people prefer the boa that's slightly squeezier because it holds on a little more when they take it out. And so these tar these uh, Carl Key boas are definitely a joy to handle and you know great temperament overall. So this is a really close category, but I'm gonna have to award the winner of the temperament to the Qual Key Boa, since the Tar Humara Mountain Boa tends to be a little more hissy and nippy as babies. So that's one win for the Qual Key Boa, zero wins for the Tar Humara Mountain Boa. Round two is husbandry. We want an animal that's gonna be forgiving in terms of its husbandry. The Tarahumara mountain boa is one of the easiest types of boas to keep. These animals come from a location where the temperature is a little more temperate than some of the more tropical boas. So they're used to uh, wider fluctuations in temperature and humidity and a little easier as far as the husbandry requirements. The small size makes housing them really easy. You can keep them in rack systems or appropriate sized 
uh, plastic snake cages. Adultar Himaras can do well in three to four foot plastic snake cages. Uh, I keep a lot of mine in these 30 by 40 inch uh, vision boa tubs, which are the ideal size. And overall, they're very simple as far as the husbandry. They always eat. I've never had one regurgitate. They're one of, definitely one of the most bulletproof boas in terms of husbandry. The Croc Key Boa is also a very easy to boa to maintain in terms of its husbandry, although it's not quite as forgiving as the uh, Tarahumara Mountain Boa. So these animals are from a more tropical uh, climate, so their husbandry and temperature conditions are a little more narrow. You know, so you have to watch the temperature and husbandry a little more. Um, in general, they need a little bit more space than the Tarahumara Mountain Boas since they move around more but you know, a four foot reptile cage would be more than adequate for almost all adult crawl key boas. They also enjoy climbing, so it's a good idea to have branches in the enclosure. So overall, this isn't a difficult boa to keep, but because of the slightly more demanding uh, husbandry requirements, the winner of the husbandry category is the Tarahumara Mountain Boa. So that's one win for the Tarahumara, one win for the crawl key. The third category is the breeding potential. Which of these two animals is easier to breed and which has offspring that are easier to get established? So the Tarahumara mountain boa breeds at probably the smallest size of pretty much any boa. You know, with uh, adult females as small as around four feet can breed, males around three and a half feet. This is actually a four, uh, four year old female who's about uh, four years old and she'll probably be ready to breed uh, next year. Incidentally, the uh, crawl key is also a four-year-old female who's about the same size. They're both 2017 holdback offspring. So the Tarahumara mountain boa is among the easiest of the locality boas to breed, although not a sure thing since boas in general are harder to breed than many other common reptiles. They're about as easy as you can get and if you slowly grow your animals and you don't rush them, you have a really good odds of success. So I use a cooling in the winter for about two months or so, where I drop the temperature about 15 degrees, and it works well to condition these animals. And then generally, uh, they will mate with no problem. The babies are some of the smallest babies, uh, but in general, they feed very readily. Uh, they will readily eat live fuzzy mice or Pinky, pinky rats with no problem. I've never had to assist feed a Tarahumara Mountain baby. And in general, the litter size is anywhere from about five to about 20 babies with an average of about a dozen babies. Uh, as I mentioned, it's really easy to get them acclimated and ready to go. Crawl key boas breed at similar sizes to the Tarahumara Mountain boas. This is a four-year-old female who I expect will be ready to breed next year. Uh, probably about four and a half feet in length. And so they're also a very, pretty relatively easy type of boa to breed. Um, in general, you just, you know, cool them slightly during the winter, introduce the male and female, and you have a pretty good odds of success. So what I will say is that although the litter size of the Qualkey boa is similar to that of the Tarahumara, with typically anywhere from five to around 20 babies, in general, the babies can be a little harder to get established on uh, feeder rodents. Sometimes people will try lizards or small bird parts to try to, you know, send them into eating. Um, I've had to resort to assist feeding some of my crawl key boas. Typically, I'll have maybe two or three from each litter that won't eat up front, so I have to assist feed them for a while. Um, so in general, the babies are a little harder to get established than the Tarahumara mountain boa. So for that reason, I'm gonna award the breeding potential category to the Tarahumara Mountain Boa. So that's two wins for the Tarahumara, one win for the Kral Key. The fourth category, looks and beauty, is definitely the most subjective of the categories. But I'll say up front that both of these animals are definitely beautiful, and what I like about them is that they're different from what most people think of when they think of a boa constrictor, you know, like a red-tailed boa or, you know, a Colombian boa. The Tarahumara mountain boas are known for their overall dark colors, various shades of brown, gray, and black, and they're even said to resemble a mini Argentine boa. 
And so these animals have lots of different shades of brown from caramel to mocha to this deep rich chocolatey brown. But they also have a lot of other uh, highlights. For example, many of them have a lot of pink and orange scales. Some of them even have kind of a bluish greenish uh, sheen to them. So a lot of really nice uh, underlying colors. Uh, the animals also have a beautiful iridescence when you look at them in the right light, like outdoor sunlight. If you look at their saddles, they typically have a high saddle count, and often the saddles will be quite symmetrical, leading to this beautiful circle back pattern uh, down their dorsal surface. So overall, a you know, beautiful looking animal. I also like the dark head markings and the, the dark head spear. The main physical characteristic of the Qualki boa is that they resemble a naturally occurring anatheristic boa. That is, they are missing most or all of the red and yellow pigment. Some of them do have a little bit of red in the tail, but most of the body lacks the yellow pigment. So they have this beautiful, rich, silvery gray color. You know, the best specimens really have this silvery steel gray to blue uh, coloration. Um, this particular animal I really like. She's got this beautiful lilac purplish sheen to her sides, as well as a lot of pink highlights. So just a really gorgeous animal. I've seen some animals that have more of a yellowish tan coloration, but they do change color quite a bit from dark to light. As far as their saddles, they often have irregular saddles. Some of them have, have symmetrical, evenly spaced saddles. It's not uncommon to see Qualki boas with several saddles fused into a dorsal stripe over much of the body. Just a beautiful animal to look at. So overall, this is the hardest category for me to pick a winner, but because of the beautiful steel gray coloration with the beautiful purple highlights that on this animal, I'm going to have to pick the Qualki boa as a winner in the looks and appearance category. This brings us to the final category, which is the future potential and popularity. So we want to breed animals that there is a lot of popularity for and that there's a demand for so that we'll have homes for our babies. With that in mind, the market for dwarf boas for a long time seemed to be not very strong. But in the last few years, these animals have really gotten popular. Unfortunately, the supply of animals has kind of dried up at the same time, so the prices have gone up quite a bit. So as far as the Tarahumar mountain boas, because these are known as the smallest of the locality boas, they always did have kind of a cult following and you know, people wanting a dwarf boa would seek these out. Um, recently, as I mentioned, that the supply has dropped because few people are breeding these and the demand has gone up. So the price has gone up quite a bit. And so the, as I mentioned, they're relatively easy to breed and the babies are usually pretty easy to get feeding. And I anticipate that the demand and popularity of these animals will remain strong for the time to come because uh, they are said to be the smallest of the locality boas, as well as having a lot of really positive characteristics for a boa owner. Like the Tarahumar mountain boa, the popularity and demand for the Qualki boa has also increased in the last few years. Although there was a time about six or seven years ago when I remember the demand for these animals was really low. And a boa breeder buddy of mine even told me that he couldn't sell his baby Qualki boas at any price. So I think in the last few years, locality boas have become more and more popular as a reaction to the morph boas. And because of this, more and more people have wanted to get these Qualki boas. So I think they'll definitely have a strong demand for the time to come. You know, breeding wise, they're a little harder to get the babies established. And they're also, since they're a little bit bigger, although not much than the Tarahumara mountain boas, I would say they're a little bit less popular. So I'm gonna to have to award the popularity and future potential category to the Tarahumara mountain boa. So that's three wins for the Tarahumara mountain boa two wins for the Qualki boa. So the overall winner of the dwarf boa face-off is the Tarahumara mountain boa. So I'd like to hear what you think of my picks, if you would have rated one of them differently in any of the categories. So please comment below. I hope this video was helpful and you enjoyed watching it. As always, if you have any questions or comments, 
please feel free to reach out to me in particular what you think of this new ultimate boa face-off and if you have any recommendations for future face-offs and episodes to come so thanks for watching and enjoy your boas